Thank you for joining us for our reflection on a lesson from the Daily Office Lectionary. My name is Mother Elizabeth Papazoglakis, and I serve as Associate Rector at St. George's Episcopal Church in Clifton Park, New York. Today is Monday in the last week after the Epiphany. Let us pray. O God, who before the passion of your only begotten Son revealed his glory upon the holy mountain, grant to us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our lesson comes from Paul's letter to the Philippians, the second chapter, beginning at the first verse. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete, be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility, Regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Here ends the lesson. On Saturday in the Daily Office Lectionary, we began lessons from Paul's letter to the Philippians. Philippi was a colony in ancient Macedonia. Since many retired soldiers lived in Philippi, Paul's military language makes a lot of sense. Paul faced resistance when he talked about Jesus being the true king of the world. After Paul moved on, those in Philippi who followed Jesus faced persecution. In spite of the persecution, they remained a vibrant community. Paul was in prison, although it's unclear where he was imprisoned. The community in Philippi sent a financial gift to Paul through Epaphroditus to support him in prison, after which Paul sent this letter back to the community. In verses from the lesson on Saturday, Paul tells the Christians in Philippi, Live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. In other words, let your life be an example of one who follows Jesus. He reminds them that their real citizenship is in heaven, not in this world. The citizens of Philippi have been described as Roman to the core, and they would have, at some point before becoming Christians, pledged allegiance to the emperor and participated in emperor worship. Paul encourages them to stand firm in their faith. The term stand firm suggests a soldier who does not leave his post. Paul tells them not to be intimidated by their opponents. As he ends the chapter writing, For he, Christ, has graciously granted you the privilege not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well. Since you are having the same struggle that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. Paul exhorted his readers to show in practical ways the unity which was theirs in Christ. 
their expression of that spiritual unity would make his joy complete. He exhorts the Philippians to put others before themselves as an act of humility. Preoccupation with oneself is a sin. Christ is the supreme example of humility and selfless concern for others. Our lesson today contains a poem in verses 6 through 11 that are almost universally taken to be one of the earliest of Christian hymns. It is a self-contained unit of material that was probably sung first in early Christian worship as an ode to Christ. This presents the saving work of Jesus Christ through what He accomplished, how He accomplished it, and God's response which affected Jesus' ultimate lordship. The intent of this work is praise and worship. The hymn ends with these wonderful words about Jesus the Christ. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. O God and Father of all, whom the whole heavens adore, let the whole earth also worship you, all nations obey you, all tongues confess and bless you, and men and women everywhere love you and serve you in peace, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Join us every weekday for our reflection. If you live in the Clifton Park area, join us for worship at 4.30 on Saturdays or 8 o'clock or 9.30 a.m. on Sunday mornings. If you're unable to join us in person, join us virtually through our YouTube channel. Our webpage provides recordings and details about all of our offerings.